I've been using the M2 Pro MacBook Pro for two weeks now and I can already say it's the best laptop I've ever used. It's not my first rodeo with Apple Silicon, I'm still a massive fan of the M1 Mac Mini, but as someone who travels a lot for work and has a one-year-old baby to look after, I can't be chaining myself to my desk for hours on end just to edit a video. And so the time has come for me to pick up a laptop and really that's all my expectations were with this machine, a solid MacBook that could get through all of my creative workflows and give me room to grow as I learn more about programs like Photoshop and Final Cut Pro. So at work, I actually have access to a 16 inch MacBook Pro. It's one of those touch bar ones that runs on Intel. And I knew that it was far too unwieldy for what I really need. So for me, the 14 inch M2 Pro MacBook was the perfect option. I decided to just go with the base model in the end. So it's the 16 gigabyte RAM version and it's running all of the baseline specs. I know from a Mac mini just how powerful the M1 base chip is. Getting my hands on a computer that's even more powerful and a lot more portable has been an absolute dream. Looking back, I always used to choose the space gray options when it came to things like phones or laptops, but for some reason I've made the switch over to silver and I have not looked back. I just think this computer is absolutely beautiful. What a sleek aluminium design and the silver just gives it a really lovely glint when you catch it in good light. It's also a lot lighter than I expected it to be and it makes that 16 inch MacBook Pro at work feel incredibly heavy when I'm lugging it around. It's gonna be a really nice typing experience. The keyboard feels just very light and tactile underneath your fingers. It's got the best trackpad in the game and I've been really surprised how much I love that Touch ID button. It makes getting into the MacBook so much quicker. And I know you've heard it all before, but that SD card slot and the MagSafe adapter are incredible lifesavers, especially when you've got a toddler running around who will yank things off the table. I have to say that this is one of the best displays I've ever used as well. And it really does make a difference when you're doing things like photo editing or color grading a video. The colors look rich, beautiful, everything looks crisp. Having 120 Hertz just makes everything feel so snappy across the whole operating system. And no, I really do not notice the notch at all. <laughs> When it comes to what I'm actually doing on the MacBook Pro, you might think that it's way overkill for me, and I'd probably agree, but I think one of the great things about technology is that it can give you a sense of what's possible, even if you're not quite there yet. So I know I've got loads of room to grow in different applications on this machine. This must be the best screen that I've ever had access to, and it really shows the details when you're punching into photographs to do those corrections on little marks that are on the table or you know bits of dust that I want to take out of a thumbnail. I can actually see them on this device and I can see the difference that going through that detailed work is actually making. Being able to make much more subtle shifts in the lighting on Photoshop or Lightroom to really get a better idea about how the colors are going to turn out in a photo. Never seeming to stutter or stall even when you've got some big files open. I do edit all of my videos in Final Cut Pro and as you'd expect, it runs incredibly well on Apple Silicon. One thing I am having to get used to compared to a desktop setup is that I can't expect to have all of my panels open on a 14 inch screen and still see very clearly what I'm editing. It's just a case of switching off the vector scope when you're done with it and packing away those transitions, but it's still an incredible experience working on Final Cut Pro. The fact that I can edit videos without any dongles and just being able to slide in that SD card, it just means that I can get videos made much more quickly and practically. I might even have time to learn something like Premiere Pro at some point. One of the cool new things I've been using a lot on my MacBook Pro is Notion AI. So I'm pretty sure that it's an integration of ChatGPT, but it brings all of that AI power into your Notion workspace. You can ask it to do things like brainstorm ideas or write an entire blog post for you. I decided to ask it if it could create the concept for a YouTube channel about handheld gaming devices. And I was actually astounded at how well it was able to home in on that audience and come up with 10 video ideas that could kick the channel off. This is only in beta at the moment and you'll have to get onto the waiting list by signing up on the Notion website. But I've really enjoyed making it a part of my productivity workflow just for idea generation or to try and simplify my language sometimes. It's just an incredible piece of kit to have on this MacBook Pro. And other than that, I haven't really added too much to the computer to be honest. I'm trying to keep it as focused as possible so that I can concentrate on my creative pursuits, learning new things, and maybe doing a little bit of web browsing when I need to. I do still use my M1 Mac Mini when I'm not as focused on those creative tasks. It's still a great computer and I love having a dedicated desktop setup. But just the fact that I can pick up this laptop, 
take it to any room in the house and edit some videos. Maybe while my son is asleep next to me, I can keep an eye on him, keep an eye on my projects. It's really a big game changer for me that will hopefully drive this channel forward. And before you ask, yes, I did try to do a lot of this on my iPad Pro before picking up a laptop. To see why that never quite worked out, check out this video here.